What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com back with another Blender architectural modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the free extension Archimesh in order to create cabinets inside of your Blender models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so later on this week, we're gonna continue our series on modeling a floor plan inside of Blender. But one of the things that we're gonna to be able to do in order to do that is to create cabinets inside of our model. So one of the cool things about Blender is it comes with an add-on that has the ability to do this. So we're going to use the add-on Archimesh in order to add some cabinets. And so the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that this is enabled. And in order to do that, you can go up to Edit, Preferences, and then under your add-ons, you want to make sure that Archimesh right here is enabled. So once this is enabled, you'll have the options that we're going to talk about in this video. So just check the box to enable it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a cabinet. So to do that, we're just going to do a Shift A, and you're going to go under Mesh and look for Archimesh. And inside of Archimesh, there's an option in here for Cabinet. And so when you click on the option for cabinet, what this is gonna do is this is gonna create a cabinet inside of your model. And so when you add your cabinet, notice that there are a number of different things that you can change and adjust about your cabinet in this window over here. One thing to be aware of is try not to click off of this because if you click off of this, this menu goes away and there's no way on the right hand side that I'm aware of to like live update this once this has been created. So if you click off of this, you can try tapping the F9 key, but even that doesn't seem to work very often. So generally it's kind of a best practice to try to create your cabinet and make all of the changes that you want before you do anything else. And so when you add this cabinet, you're going to notice that pretty much everything about these cabinets is adjustable. So you can adjust the thickness, you can adjust their depth off of the wall. Um, one thing being from America that's a little bit frustrating is it doesn't support Imperial units. It'll only support metric units. So you may have to do some conversions if you work in Imperial. For everyone that works in metric, obviously that's not going to be a huge deal. But you can adjust things like the height of your cabinet above ground. There's also a number of different handles that you can put in here. And notice how these are coming in as purple right now. So when these are coming in as purple, what that means is that means that can't find the material that it's looking for. So all that means is that means that you're gonna have to come in here and apply a metal material to this, which shouldn't really be a huge deal. So in addition, you can also adjust the thickness of your counter, both from a height and from a depth standpoint. You can also adjust the height of your baseboard. So if you don't want this way off the ground from a baseboard standpoint, you can adjust that right here. And so notice how you can also use this to add multiple different cabinets in here. Well, when you do this, those cabinets are each gonna have individual options. So notice how when I move this to two, this is now giving me two different cabinets and I have options in here for either one of them. And so what that means is that means that you can come in here and you can adjust each one of these individually. So for example, this cabinet right here, I want this to be a single left cabinet, not a single right cabinet, so that my doors line up just like this. And so you can keep adding cabinets and make this as wide or as short as you want, depending on how you want this to look. So in addition, there's also options if you wanna add like a baseboard fill so underneath this, so for example, on cabinet one, I can add a baseboard right here in order to close this in. And so let's say, for example, that these are my base cabinets. I could also come back in here using Archimesh and I could create wall cabinets. So in order to do that, I would just move this up, select the option for wall. Notice how this keeps the settings that you had in here. So notice how this is adding four cabinets in here, which aligns with what we had in there before but you can adjust things like height as well as height above ground by adjusting the Z position. So you can see how this is all highly customizable. And so based on adjusting these settings, you could then come in and you could start creating things like tall cabinets. So for example, you could take this cabinet and you could give it a taller height. So maybe something like two right here, and then you could turn off the counter. So by turning off the cab or turning off the counter, you could then take this whole thing, make the height align with the top of your cabinets over here, and then just move this over. So if I move this over, you could do something like turning your edge snapping on. So you could do a shift tab or just click on this. Then you could move this so that the vertices snap like this. 
so that you could align your cabinets. But you can see how creating these cabinets is really easy in here. And again, note that once you've kind of, it's really hard to get that menu back. It doesn't really show up even if you do an adjust last op adjust last operation. So just make sure that you've made the changes that you want within this tool. But then the other thing you can do is these are also set up with default materials. So if I was to click this drop down, for example, you can see how all of these come in with a door material, a countertop material, a cabinet material, and a baseboard material. Basically what that means is that means you can just replace these with your own materials. So for example, if I was to go into my shading tab, like this, and it comes in and it adds this kind of like mix shader, which I'm not really sure that you need for a cabinet material, especially if you're using, um, if you're using a principled texture setup. So what I might do is I might delete these out and then just set this up so that my principal shader goes into my uh, material output. We'll turn this into material preview mode. But then we can just select this and I'm just gonna set up a material real quick. So I'm just gonna note that I have node wrangler enabled, but I'm just gonna do a control shift T and I've got this light wood material. I can just select these and just do a principled texture setup like this. Now the only thing that you might need to do though is you might need to UV map these. So this comes in here and when you apply this, notice that your texture isn't actually showing up in here. That's because we haven't UV mapped any of this. So these didn't come in UV mapped. So an easy way to do this, if you just want to apply the map to these doors, for example, is just to do a shift click and select them all like this. And then just hitting tab and then going into UV and just clicking on cube projection. So what cube projection is going to do for those items, I'm not sure why I didn't pick the, these other ones up as well. Um, I'm just gonna do a UV cube projection on all of these. Is now if I go into my UV editing mode, you can see how this has taken these and it's basically um, just done a simple cubic UV map on this, which is all we need here, because all we have to do is just select all of these faces inside of your UV editor and just scale it up or down in order to get the texture sizing that we want. So you can quickly add materials in this way. So you could do the same thing for your boxes over here. So if you wanted all your boxes from behind, you could just select them all. And depending on how accurate you're trying to be, you might want to UV unwrap these a little bit more for what we're doing right here. This ought to work just fine. Um, it doesn't have to be super complex, but I've just selected all those. I tab into edit mode and then under UV, I just click cube projection. And so notice how these still don't have a material applied to them because the boxes have a different material or these don't have a texture applied to them because the boxes or the cabinets have a different material. So we could go back into our shading editor and then for our boxes, so we could go into our material settings and for our cabinet material. So notice how when we click on this, it shows up as a cabinet material. Just click the drop down and select the option for door material. And so now this will just apply the door material to your cabinets. So this is a quick, easy way to apply materials to these cabinets as well. So, and then for whatever reason, our handle material if we look at this and we select it in the shader editor, it doesn't even have a material output node in here. So probably what I would do is just do a shift A and I would just search for output. Click right here and then just attach this BSDF to your surface. So then this shows up okay. These are currently in here as kind of a white material, but you can adjust them or you could apply an actual texture to them as well. Um, but you can just take this and you can just, just adjust this so they show up a little more metallic adjust their roughness up and down to determine if you're gonna get um, reflections coming off of them, things like that. So the materials are pretty easy to edit using this tool as well. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. I feel like this tool is pretty intuitive, pretty easy to use, but if you have any questions about anything we talked about, leave a comment down below and let me know. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.